The first talk in the morning, it is always a little bit sleepy. Uh, so welcome to my talk. Thanks for coming. Uh, this talk is going to be about RubyMine, about RubyMine, different tips and tricks, and some productivity hints, and I hope you will learn something new today. Uh, but before we can start, I uh, would ask you to do something for me. Uh, so please stand up. Okay, thank you. So please raise both your hands if you use RubyMine. Okay, please just stay. <laughs> please raise both your, both your hands if you don't use RubyMine. No, 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 just stay with your hands, yeah? Okay, let's stretch it a bit. Okay, yeah, morning routine, thanks a lot. <laughs> so please sit down. Uh, I think that now we are ready to start. Uh, so, my name is Tatiana, I'm a product marketing manager of RubyMine. Uh, I'm a part of RubyMine team at JetBrains, but I'm not a developer. Uh, I used to be a developer 10 years ago, I used to be a Ruby and Rails developer when Rails was really young, <laughs> but now I'm not. So, if, some, if something uh, is not working today, don't blame me. Okay, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm a RubyMine, a part of RubyMine team, so you, of, of course you can blame me, but I will blame the team, <laughs> the developers. Okay, so let's start. Um, when talking about ID, the first thing you start with is actually making your environment looking good for you and uh, making your environment comfortable as possible to your eyes and fingers. So we will start with some tips in making your ID a little bit more suitable for your needs. Uh, and we will start with the color scheme. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's my rescue time. <laughs> um, so let's go here. I want to use this very quick switcher and uh, change the look and feel. For example, to dark one. Or you can switch it back to default one, and uh, just want to ask you which is better for you for this presentation for today. Dark, Dark one? Okay. Yeah? Okay. Let, let it be dark. So another thing that sometimes it's useful when you are working in a pair for something or making presentations, so it's a very, very quick way to, to switch the color. Uh, and the same way you can switch the key map, I'm using this one, but of course you can use another one. We have some predefined ones like TextMate, Emacs, and some others. Um, again, for example, if you're a pair programming with someone who uses another key map, it is the best way to switch between them. You don't need to go to preferences to search for key maps there. You can just make it in one click. But still, if you want to go to preferences and uh, for example, uh, adjust a key map for your needs. You can do it here. Go to key map and preferences. You can see uh, all the comments here. You can change the shortcuts and you can even search uh, by case stroke like, and then change it. So you can adjust any predefined key map for your, for your habits and for things that you are used to. Um, Okay, so let's go back. Um, and of course, you can also adjust all the colors. I mean that we can switch these predefined color schemes, but again, you can save all the colors for, for everything you need to. You can change it, adjust, so just in case you need it. And another thing I want to show you that from my point of view is quite useful, it is a list of plugins. Um, you can see that we have a lot of them. Most of them are bundled with RubyMine, so they are pre-installed. But if you need something more from RubyMine, you can always go to the list of plugins and install something new. Uh, for example, for this presentation, I'm using uh, this one, Presentation Assisted Plugin. It shows all, all the shortcuts I use at the bottom. So here it is. And to install new one, you 
just need to go to this install JetBrains plugins or even to install not plugins from JetBrains but from the community. Um, okay, so uh, you can also adjust uh, the look and feel of the window. You can see that I have, it's, it, it's in my view, I have a project tree at the left usually and have an editor at the right. Uh, you can also switch off the toolbar, switch on navigation bar, status bar, and here the small icon that uh, help you to navigate among all the tool windows. Uh, you can have uh, these tool window icons here, but you can hide them as well. And another interesting tip here that is that you can see these numbers uh, near at the, in the name and the title of every tool window, and this number means that you can choose command this number to open this tool window, like command one to open project view and to hide it. Or for example, command four to open a run window and to hide it. So, and if you open too many, for example, tool windows, a lot of them, and you're a little bit lost and you want to go back to your code, uh, the best way to do is, is to use shift command F12. Uh, this will hide all the tool windows and just go back to editor for you. So it's a good way to stay focused on your code without having all these tool window icons actually actually open, so I hide them. <laughs> I don't need them. I navigate with a keyboard and I don't need to see all of them all the time. Uh, if you want something even more to be even more focused on your code, you can go to this uh, view mode and enter distraction free mode, and it looks like that. Nothing, just code. <laughs> Uh, or you can exit uh, this distraction view mode and, for example, enter presentation mode and it will look like that. Uh, sometimes I use it when I'm coding a lot, when I have live codings during the presentation, but today I won't use it because I want to show you all the windows and all, all, all the ID. Not, not, we, we, actually, we won't code. So. I will uh, exit it. Okay, so uh, something that was about setting up your environments. And now let's talk a little bit more about navigation through your code. Uh, maybe uh, the most common way to navigate, the most simple one, uh, is to see this project, project tree, yeah, project structure. And nothing special here, just uh, I hope you know that you can search here. Just start typing and you will search for, for this tree. But uh, the things that I want to show you is um, <coughs> in this small icon in the settings and these two options. It is auto scroll to source and auto scroll from source. By the way, who uses that? Whoa, <laughs> one person, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so, if you switch out a scroll to source, it means that when just uh, going through your tree, uh, you will open also open all the files in the editor. But frankly speaking, I don't, I don't like it. I don't think it's very useful. Uh, what I do like it, it's another one. It is out a scroll from source, uh, and this one means that when switching through your tabs, through your code, you will still be aware where you are in your project. When, when the project structure is opened. Sometimes it's good. For example, when you're debugging and digging in your code, sometimes you really need to know <laughs> where you are <laughs> when you're a little bit lost. So from my point of view, it is a good, options, a good option. Um, okay, so it's about project view. Another thing is that if you are doing Rails, and I think that most of you are doing Rails because we are at RailsConf, <laughs> Uh, you can also switch this project view, okay, don't blame me, <laughs> please blame developers. <laughs> uh, just a moment, let's try to fix it on the fly, but I will definitely add <laughs> a bug report, <laughs> sorry for that. Uh, okay, so you can use this Rails view. And uh, this view means that uh, you will see the structure of your code not at the 
folders and file structure, but uh, by means of models, views, and controllers. So what you can see here is uh, all the controllers in one place, and for example, under each controller you can see all the actions, and under, under each action you will see all the corresponding views. So some kind of Rails, Rails view. And of, of course you can navigate from here as well. Uh, let's, let's switch to, to views and etc. Uh, but if you still need, for example, I prefer Rails view, but sometimes I still need to go get, go get back to project structure view, to folders and file structure. The best way to do this is not to switch this project view actually, but to use navigation bar. So you can see that here on the top I have navigation bar and I can really easily very, very easy to navigate through all the folders and I can again just start typing here and it understands snake case and of course camel case so it's a good way to navigate through your files and folders if you still need them without opening project, project tree view at, at the left or staying on your URLs view there. Um, okay, but I, I have a question. One question. Do you feel comfortable with this view or something is a little bit weird, a little bit strange, something you don't like? Come on. <laughs> Any ideas? Tabs, yeah, hooray. <laughs> I think that, yes, I think that tabs are really awkward here. They take so many place of your code editor. Why do you need them? I don't think that we do, that we actually do need them. I don't. I hope that you don't as well. <laughs> so the best way to deal with them is just to switch them at all, switch them off. And we can, of course, do it with the preferences, go to preferences, find the right line here and switch it back. But uh, I have uh, a smarter way. It is, it is a way by using a find action feature. Uh, do you use it? Or my users, do you use it? Okay. So do you know that you can, with this, uh, shortcut, you can find any, every action in the ID by the name, like start searching like copy or something like that. And it is also a good way if you forgot some shortcut to remember it. <laughs> <coughs> but it is also a good way to <coughs> change preferences. For example, if I start typing, uh, not tab, but tab, placement here, you can see that all the preferences are listed here as well. So just start searching and you can just manage them from, 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 from there. There's no need to go to preferences. There's no need to search through all the preferences lists. So please use it. But <clears throat> you may now ask me if I don't have tabs, how I'm going to uh, navigate from my recently edited files and so on. And the best way to do it for me is to use um, command E to see all the recent files or to shift command E and you will see all the recently edited files. And frankly speaking, you will see all the files and tool windows and from my point of view, it is much better than tabs. <laughs> Okay, so, and of, of course you can just start typing here to filter if you have the huge list, if you have edited a lot. Um, okay, so, another, another thing that I, sorry, <laughs> just want to click escape. Uh, if you still want to go to Let's go back to controller, and sometimes if I'm in view, I can do with a simple icon. Uh, if I want to uh, navigate uh, not only from my files, but uh, also to navigate, uh, let's do here, for example, uh, to navigate through all, all the methods, for example, in my class, in my file. Uh, the best way for me to do it is to use command F12, it shows uh, structure pop up and it shows all the methods and the interesting thing here is that if you will click it once more time you will see all the inherited me methods as well so sometimes quite useful and uh, another thing a little bit more 
some smarter, a way smarter navigation is actually to use go to definition. Because I believe that a lot of times what you really need is not to navigate to any file or class, but to navigate to declaration, to definition of any variable or method you are looking at. And uh, the best way to do is to use command B, and you will navigate to, to definition, to declaration, okay. And you can use it again and again to dig your code. <laughs> and, um, and you will navigate to libraries, to gems as well, not only through your source, through a project, but through, through your gems as well. Uh, and you can also use this one, is command Y. If you don't want to switch to that file where the definition is, you can use this quick definition pop-up to see the method definition in a pop-up, not going to, to the file. Okay, so now I have a question for you. Uh, please raise your hands if you already knew something new from, from, from the last slides. Okay, great. Now you can leave. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm hoping that you will leave something new, <laughs> something more new as well. Um, Okay, let's talk a little bit more about uh, coding now. Uh, so, yeah, starting with creating a new file, I think that uh, it is very basic action. I hope that you know it. But an interesting thing here, hopefully you know it, that you can use Rails generators from here as well to use your scaffolding, controls, uh, whatever. And one more thing, here is that when creating, for example, a new file, simple file, you can also use like directors here and everything will be created for you. No, I don't want to edit. And with this auto scroll from source action, you can see that you will be navigated through a project in, in your project structure very fast as well. So here I am. No, don't need, don't really need it. So I'm going to delete, yep. Um, but sometimes, uh, for example, myself, sometimes I want to create these temp files, temporary files, temporary directories with this four RB files just to experiment, to, to play with some uh, piece of code. And uh, for making that, uh, and I don't want these files to be stored in my first, in my project structure. I don't actually want them to be stored in my version control system or whatever. I just want to play with them. And uh, the best way to do that, not to create these temporary folders <laughs> and these four IRB files, but to create scratch files. And you can do that with shift command N. Um, create, for example, some Ruby file. And it is like file, but it is not physical file in your project structure. It will be stored inside, inside Ruby mine, inside IDE. But still, you can start coding, the coding here, and everything will be available, like code completion. Um, and good thing is that you can also use Shift Control R, yeah, and you can run it from here as well. So for Ruby code, it's pretty, pretty useful from my point of view. <laughs> okay. And if you want to go, for example, to see where these files actually are, you can go here, go to scratch files. Again, the same bug, sorry for that, but I, I won't do this now. And you can see there that, for example, I have three scratches, so they're, they're stored for you. You can then back to them again and do something. Okay. It was strange behavior. Okay, it's just my thoughts about this bug. Um, let's go back to some controller. For example, yeah, this one, this one. Uh, of course, um, when coding, you manipulate code a lot, and you use a lot of copy and uh, select code actions and so on and so, so forth. And in Ruby mind, they're pretty, pretty the basic ones, <laughs> but still, um, uh, I don't know if you use it. You can use this uh, extend selection. It is quite useful. It will select the chunks of, of code uh, semantically. Um, and uh, you can then like 
for example, here, yeah. And you can then, for example, move them. Please don't do copy and paste, just move them <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you need moving. Uh, and uh, you can also copy some lines and you don't need to select the whole line, you just need to put a cursor on it. And you can duplicate them, delete them. Again, you don't need to select the whole line, just put the cursor. And uh, when copying a lot of them, and if you need to paste, uh, you can use it with shift and you will see the history of your clipboard. So sometimes it is useful as well. And uh, we also do have some multiple selections. Uh, you can set multiple cursors by finding next occurrence, for example. And you can just start typing and you will see that code completion is working here as well. You can use it for all the places um, and so on and so forth. Uh, frankly speaking, if you want all the power of, for example, Wim editing, and I have, by the way, who is using Wim? Okay, so for example, if you want the whole power of Wim editing, code editing in Ruby mind. So if you want like to have the both from both worlds, <laughs> uh, the best way to do it, uh, so is to install a special plugin. You need to go to plugins, uh, find, sorry, idea, Wim plugin. You need to install it. It is not bundled uh, from these JetBrains plugins. And uh, once it is installed, you can go here to tools, uh, Wim emulator and just enable the emulation. I won't do that, but if you want to try, you are more than welcome to go to, after, after my talk, or to go to our booth, JetBrains booth, we we'll have it at the exhibitor hall, and to try on my laptop, for example, with this plugin, just, just to try all the actions. Because I'm not a Wim user, so <laughs> I'm just not, even not pretending <laughs> to try all this, <laughs> the smart things from Wim. But, but you still can take a look how it works in RubyMine. Okay, so, one more thing about editing, I want to talk a little bit more about code snippets. Uh, so do you use code snippets? Okay, so, yeah, yes, okay. So in RubyMine we have a lot of predefined code snippets, a huge list, but you can also create your own ones. And sometimes it's, it's, it's a great way. When you have a kind of very looking similar code <laughs> that you don't want to type once a lot of times, and I'm not, Thinking about refactorings here are just, uh, it's, it, it's another topic, okay. So you can just select this code fragment and go here like save as live template. Here it is. And you will need to add a title for, for it and you can go there and add some variables here. Yep. And I also want to add end variable. It means that I want to put a cursor, another line after, after ending with this code snippet. Okay, let's now try. So if I go there, oh sorry. And now command G and TCC, you remember, is on you. Here you can see that cursor was placed on the right place, it is the first variable place. And now you can start just typing and complete, and it will be completed according to our code snippet template. And then I just click tab and go to the end of line. It is, it is the end of my code snippet. Uh, okay, so let's go back to them, to the list, just to show you that uh, of course, you can also use a lot of predefined ones, or you can change them slightly if you want, or you can set up your own ones. And we have a lot of them, not, on, not only for Ruby, but for JavaScript and Rails and SQL and everything. Okay, I'm just going to delete this one. Um, another really quick way to code when not talking now talking about HTML, it is Emmet. So anyone using Emmet here? 
Okay. <laughs> I really, I do like Emmet. I'm not uh, really experienced in it, but still. So you can use it in RubyMine as well. Just, just start typing, and with the tab, it will make you HTML from your Emmet. And another thing that you can now select this code and use Shift Command G. No. Alt command G, sorry, yeah. And surround it with Emmet. So like here, yes, here it is. <laughs> and you can also, if you are not really sure about your Emmet, I use it a lot. <laughs> you can also choose Emmet preview. Oh, where is my link? Okay, oh, I see, yes. It, it, it depends on, on the place where, where the cursor stays. So, so you, you can preview before, before adding to your, to your code. Okay, and now, for example, if I change something, let me, sometimes I want to look a little bit nicer, and uh, I, mean, I mean that I, sometimes I want to after that, to reformat it, to make cold style look looks good. So, talking about cold styles, uh, there are several uh, several ways to work with the cold styles in RubyMine. And first of all, we have a lot of cold style preferences in our preferences. You can change them if you want to. They are based on some community community styles. <laughs> uh, um, and uh, you can use this alt, alt command L or with, with shift uh, to define a scope for, for the code fragment that you want to reformat according to these code style settings. Uh, but uh, actually you can also use editor config. Uh, anyone using editor config here? Oh. <laughs> You're not doing a lot of open source or something like that, because <laughs> they really do to have editor graphics files with the code style settings just to have the same code style for all the developers among, among the project. Okay, so by the way, if you have uh, editor config, you can just uh, uh, put this file, editor config file, at the root, and uh, all the code style settings will be, will be got from here. Sorry, <laughs> sorry for my English. Um, and if you are writing JavaScript and using ESLint, you can set up RubyMind to use this one as well. So it's about code style. Okay, we have not a lot of time here. Um, so now I want to talk a little bit more about not only writing your code, but about cleaning it up. So about some inspections and refactorings. Um, hope you know and oh, Uh, about our, I need some broken code, at least. Okay, yeah, here it is. Um, hopefully you know that RubyMine highlights all the errors according to a lot of uh, inspections that we have. And uh, it provides a quick fix option. So with, with Alt-Enter, you can see that you can see that it was unless used with else, and you can just click Enter to, to fix it, to, to change the the code. And sometimes um, it is a good way just maybe to provide, for example, new methods. So not only to clean your code, but to write it as well. Uh, like you're first just putting an, a method without declara declarating it, and then you're just going to uh, intention action and create it with one click. So. Um, and one thing that maybe you don't know that you will also have this small icon uh, where you can manage your highlighting level and switch the power safe mode if you need to. So if you don't want to have all these highlightings, no problem. <laughs> just don't be panicked. Just switch it off. <laughs> it, it's, it's okay. <laughs> yes, but be responsible for your code <laughs> in this point. Um, and we have, you can also uh, run a code inspector through all the whole project, for example, to see all the errors that RubyMine can find. And uh, I want to show you one of the examples. Uh, it is not only inspecting, but it is 
also about locating duplicates. Yep. Here it is. Uh, RubyMine finds all the duplica duplications in your code. You can see the details here, like here. It is almost identical, you can see. Or like here, it is just identical. <laughs> <laughs> and it means that if you have a lot of duplications in your code, it means that you want to do something with, with, this, with this code. It is definitely not dry. <laughs> and uh, you can just go from this window to your editor. You can see, you can see that we have navigated to, to an editor and we have RubyMine highlights this code fragment. And now I can, for example, just select it and use my refactor, this option, and for example, extract method from, from, from this code. Some new method. Okay, and this dialog is very interesting because you remember that we had two places with the, with the same code. So RubyMind warns you that if you're, want, if, if you're extracting a method from a code fragment, if you do have the same code fragment, so you probably want to change to, to invoke this method there as well. So do you want to replace it? Yes. Do you want to replace it? Yes. OK. So it's just uh, a way to inspect and refactor, like, like, <laughs> like your code. Um, OK. Now let's talk a little bit more about testing and debugging stuff. Uh, run all my tests with rake. Yeah, and while running, maybe uh, if you use test runner, maybe you know that uh, by default it is on the bottom, but uh, you can always move this tool window with this option. You can move it top, top, bottom, left or right. No matter, I like to place it on the left, <laughs> but maybe you prefer some other options. Uh, the interesting things here I want to show you is this small icon. Uh, it filters all the tests. So you can see all the list of tests, all the list of all tests, or you can just click and see only failed ones. So I think that uh, you may want to stay focused on the failed ones, not, not on the green ones. Um, and you can see what was gone wrong, what was wrong by switching and you can see, yeah, here the, what, 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 what was going on. And you can just navigate by clicking from here to the test code. So it's quite useful. And again, if you want to, if you have some failed tests and you want to find out what was wrong, you can navigate to test. And a good way is just to debug this test from, it is like a quite natural next step, I guess so. <laughs> Uh, so you can just put a breakpoint here, and you can uh, debug Control Shift D. I just uh, forgot. Uh, okay, so you can see that now our test is running on a debug mode, and we stop at, at a breakpoint. You can see that, and we can see the list of variables here. Yeah, and we can go step by step. Oh. Okay, assert equal, maybe um, just, just one, one, one more time to show you. Without step over, but with step into. So here it is. You can step over, you can step into. You can go through your code, uh, look for some more details. And uh, by the way, you can also manage breakpoints. Uh, you can go to these more breakpoints and see all the breakpoints for your code. You can enable or disable them. So if you have a lot of them, sometimes it is also useful. And you can also add some exception, conditional breakpoints, and, and et cetera. And one new, quite a new feature that I want to tell about debugging, um, it is this small preference. Uh, non source. No. Uh -huh. Where is it? Oh, I know where is it. Yeah. Ignore. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so we can go there, and you can see that we have this small uh, setting in debugging stepping, and it actually means that you can decide uh, whether you want to step into your libraries, into your gems, or you want to stay inside your project. So if you don't want to go to dig into all the libraries, just put this setting and you will debug by stepping over only in your code. Even if you have breakpoints there in your gems, you will go only through your code and step on breakpoints in your code, in your own code. Uh, okay, so the main tips and tricks and uh, just one more question. If you use version control system with with RubyMine, if you use RubyMine. Okay, uh, we have not a lot of time, and maybe uh, if you don't mind, I will answer all the questions afterwards or at the booth, because I want to show you one more trick, <laughs> if you don't mind. Okay, so about version control systems, um, quite a useful thing. Uh, let's go to version control, and okay, you can see all the history here for all the project for the repository and you can see your local changes uh, but uh, the useful thing that the small trick I want to show is that uh, example if you are going to um, if you are going to commit your changes uh, not push commit okay common K it was the wrong shortcut yeah uh, you can see that we have this commit uh, dialog with the diff view as well. And now you can actually edit your code just in your commit dialog. If you need to fix something small and you mention it, you don't need to go back to editor. You just need to check this icon. And now you can just change whatever you need. For example, just get the version from the left, or just start typing here, something, so what, whatever you want. So it's a small trick that, from my point of view, is quite useful if you're using version control systems. Um, okay, and one more question is about data, databases. Uh, do you use databases in RubyMine? Database you? Okay, <laughs> so you know about them <laughs> quite a lot. But uh, if you don't use, just want to let you know that we have uh, this database uh, where, we can s where you can see all the data you have. And you can just open your tables. You can see all the data. We we can, of course, you can even change the database from here, but uh, I think it's better to do with migration files, you know. So, uh, but when you want to look through your data and to have some queries like like me do, uh, it's sometimes good to go, for example, to where is it? Hello. Yeah, here it is. Like open Sun console and just start typing, and it will. Well, highlight and or not highlight, but complete everything you need. So, and you can run them and what else? So you can play with the database. And you don't need to uh, to set up everything because, as far as Rails projects do have database configurations files, actually everything you need when you set up your database the first time, you need to go to this database, click here, and import from sources. So everything will be suggested to, to you. Just, just according to your database configuration files. So it's quite, quite useful from my point of view. <laughs> okay, so that's it. Only one minute left. Uh, thank you for your attention. If you have some short questions, I will be glad to answer. Or we can just have a chat after the talk or at the booth. We have a booth at the exhibition called JetBrains, like JetBrains. So if you, have, if you want to have more demos, if you have any questions, we will be glad to, to, to help. And there, one guy, he's a developer, to remind you, so if you want to blame something, <laughs> to have some <laughs> bugs to talk about, come on, you're very welcome. <laughs> okay, so thanks, thank you.